Hey friends and welcome to today's talk about the tumor angiogenesis. So angiogenesis in general is the formation of new blood vessels from pre-existing ones. Lots of diseases are associated with the formation of new blood vessels. However, today we will look into cancer. How does a tumor make sure to get enough blood and oxygen supply? Here we have a pre-existing blood vessel. One out of several characteristics of a blood vessel is that due to the hemoglobin in the blood it is possible to transport and also supply cells with oxygen. So this blood vessel here has a basement membrane on the outside and in the inside it is protected by elongated endothelial cells. So let's define what is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the formation of a new blood vessel from pre-existing vasculature. So there already is a blood vessel. Angiogenesis describes the sprouting procedure. If we talk about tumor angiogenesis, we should introduce with the oxygen supply. So here we have cells which are in close range to the blood vessel. So the cells can take up oxygen which can diffuse from the bloodstream into the cell area. However, as you can see here, there is a gradient. So cells which are in close proximity to the blood vessel receive higher oxygen, whereas cells in greater distance to the blood vessel are supplied with less oxygen. We have to keep in mind that the oxygen diffusion through tissue is limited. There is a certain range which oxygen can travel. Here we have a tumor which is in medium distance to the blood vessel. This tumor will grow but just to a certain size. You can imagine if the tumor would grow more, cells in the inside, which are somehow covered by proliferating cells on the outside, will not get enough oxygen anymore. The tumor has reached a limited size. Without oxygen it can't grow anymore and you can already see here the environment is considered to be hypoxic. That means that in this tumor microenvironment here, there is not enough oxygen for the tumor to grow more. Now the tumor has to react. The so-called angiogenic switch has to be activated. And this is done by releasing pro-angiogenic growth factors. And one of the key players here is VEGF or VEGF. And this is the vascular endothelial growth factor. The endothelial cells have VEGF receptors. In the inside there is a tyrosine kinase domain and on the outside there is a ligand binding site. So these receptors can bind VEGF. These VEGF receptors are exclusively expressed on endothelial cells. They are somehow essential for pathophysiological angiogenesis. Let's make it more simple so we just take one VEGF molecule here. So in response to the VEGF binding, on the VEGF receptors, proteases are released and these can degrade the basement membrane. So they can make it leaky. Now the sprouting procedure can start. These endothelial cells, especially the tip cells, will lead the way to the hypoxic environment. So in the end, due to these hypoxic factors released by the tumor tissue, a new blood vessel is formed and the vascularization of the tumor tissue will supply the tumor with oxygen and glucose. The environment is now not hypoxic anymore and that means, unfortunately, the tumor can grow. Even worse, the angiogenesis makes it also possible for a tumor to metastasize, to travel through the bloodstream to discover new places for growing. So this is the system how a tumor basically tricks the blood vessel to form sprouts towards the tumor direction. The release of pro-angiogenic factors makes it possible that the tumor is in the end supplied with enough nutrients. There are plenty of treatments against VEGF or the VEGF receptor. For example, there are antibodies against VEGF and there are also tyrosine kinase inhibitors for the receptor. However, that is it. I hope the video was helpful. I thank you very much for watching and really hope to see all of you in the next video. Have a nice one.